Good evening. Welcome our top debate. Uh, the mention in a US Pentagon report of a large Chinese village in Arunachal Pradesh first reported by NDTV has resulted in a major political battle with the opposition asking the government to come clean on Chinese construction activity on Indian soil. There are now satellite images uh, which uh, we actually have broadcast a few months back. We'll show those uh, once again. What exactly do all of these show? That's going to be our first debate. Next up on this program, and it's a one-hour special tonight, for the third time in recent weeks, the Supreme Court has expressed its dissatisfaction with the handling of the case involving farmers run over in Lakhimpur Kheri last month, allegedly by the Union Minister Ajay Mishra's son, Ashish Mishra. We don't want to add to political overtones. Let a retired High Court judge oversee the case. That's what the Chief Justice of India, Henry Ramana, said, berating the Uttar Pradesh government over poor progress in the case. But first, um, let's uh, begin with the, the big debate that we are looking at this evening. It's been a big debate now for the last couple of days. The mention in a US Pentagon report of a large Chinese village in Arunachal Pradesh, that's resulted in a major political battle. What we are planning to do on this program is actually try and understand the significance of this from a national security standpoint. And in order to do that, because there is a political angle to this, which we'll get to later on, but first the significance of this from a national security standpoint. I'm joined by one of India's finest soldier thinkers, Lieutenant General D.S. Huda. Thanks very much, General, for being with us. Now, General Huda, Article 7 um, of the 2005 agreement between India and China, it's a bilateral agreement, states very carefully that the interests of settled populations need to be protected until such time as there is a, uh, an agreement on how this is all going to be fixed. That still stands. By constructing a village now in Arunachal Pradesh, isn't China state changing the status quo? Essentially, if you build a village, you populate it, then that becomes your settled population. Uh, so, Vishnu, let me just, uh, you know, sort of put this in perspective for all your viewers. So, the area we're talking about uh, is the area of Longju, which has been under Chinese control since 1959. So, uh, it's not as if they've come into a new area and, and built a village here. So, it's a disputed area. The other thing to note is that uh, it's an agreed disputed area between the two countries. Which means, yes, both countries accept that here the line of actual control and its alignment is disputed. As you also pointed out that the 2005 uh, agreement talks about taking the settled uh, population into consideration. Both countries, Vishnu, uh, have been very careful about what they do in disputed areas. And therefore, by building a village here, and subsequently trying to show that, you know, we have a settled population here. I think they're trying to present a sort of a fait accompli to us, saying that this area is uh, settled by us and therefore no longer a disputed area, an area that is under our control. So that I think uh, has sort of major implications as far as, uh, you know, a final settlement of the border is concerned. All right. What sort of message or what does this send in terms of what China may be trying to do by up the ante on disputed territory? So, Vishnu, uh, you know, earlier it isn't as if uh, the Chinese haven't used the civil population uh, earlier to try and stake their claims. So, we've had complaints earlier of, uh, I know, uh, for example, practically in, in Ladakh, of not permitting our graziers to go to their traditional uh, grazing areas. They've also used, uh, uh, they're still using, for example, in Demchok, uh, putting some tents across the LAC and saying, uh, this is not us. This is our, you know, civil population that has gone to its traditional area. Uh, but that was, uh, should I say, uh, more nuanced. Now it's sort of, uh, you know, become much more open and much more aggressive. Not only are we seeing this village building uh, in areas of Arunachal Pradesh, which are disputed, but also, for example, in disputed Bhutanese territory. So, also add to this, Vishnu, the new border law that they've passed. And if you see one of the provisions of the new border law that they've passed is uh, that the civil population in these areas are going to support the PLA in its activity to strengthen control over the borders. 
we also have reports of civilians from the chumbi valley uh, which was the scene of the 2017 standoff uh, about 400 of them have been recruited uh, specifically for the purpose of strengthening border management in that area so i think they are becoming much more aggressive about this and uh, if you're asking me the long term implications i think positions have hardened in fact positions vishnu have hardened on both sides and so what are the implications of this uh, on what is happening in ladakh what could possibly happen further in arunachal in disputed areas uh, i think it's a it's a worrisome trend that we need to take care of i'm just trying to understand uh, you know legally sir when you mentioned the word disputed it's disputed for them it's not disputed for us we believe given our position that the 1914 agreement and the mcmahon line is the de facto border in that area they disagree so it's disputed for them for us the chinese are on our territory you know we may not have physical possession of that territory quite evidently we don't but it's not disputed territory for us sir it's our territory and 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 i have one more point one more uh, submission it's not just limited to that area around the village it actually extends further south as well it's a dynamic situation where they've gone in further south as well hence it becomes more serious so vishnu yes uh, i agree you know uh, we have uh, we have an lac as we understand it very clearly and so therefore anything that happens uh, south or west of it uh, we say that you know the chinese are in are in our territory uh, that point uh, well understood but i think both sides to be fair have accepted that there are certain areas where the lac alignment is in dispute right both and it is over here accepted. yes it is over here the point i am making vishnu is that both countries were quite sensitive to what happens in these areas right and understanding the sensitivity that there would be no uh, construction activity there would be no additional uh, you know constructions or infrastructure development in these areas if you recall in 2015 uh, vishnu uh, demchok is one more disputed yep. area for example yep. and so we, we were trying to uh, you know construct some uh, some water channels some hot springs in those areas which the chinese objected to so uh, what has happened now is that all these sort of arrangements understanding between the two sides you know seem to have just sort of uh, gone out of the window and from the chinese side we are finding much more sort of aggressiveness assertiveness to establish control over the area, over the areas that they consider their own i think it also has implications for how our negotiations for example in eastern ladakh yep where where they have come into areas that we consider our own uh, how those negotiations will go forward and and i think uh, personally and after having seen what happened in the 13th round of of talks uh, we are going to find uh, it much more difficult to arrive at you know some common ground here yeah general um, i'm just trying to understand what was or what should uh, the role of the army be when the chinese up the ante and start constructing massively um, you know in in these disputed areas what they did in 2020 they built up this village in one year because we've got pictures from 2019 it wasn't there a hundred um, home cemented structure in an area which is you know there was a landslide there as well apparently but they still constructed right so what does the army do in a situation like that so uh, vishnu in in this area particularly so uh, i know you've said they are building even further south of that village but their post actually is uh, you know further south to where the where the village is i think what we need to look at uh, vishnu and i have i have written about this is where are the areas where there is a difference in perception about where the lac lies and we need to strengthen our capability in those areas in some areas i know i know we are doing it but what the army needs to do is areas that we consider our own as you said for for us these are not disputed areas that's where our presence and our activity needs to increase now so that uh, you know the soul salami slicing the soul creeping forward i mean that is that is arrested and my second point vishnu is 
you know, I think we need to accept what is happening and therefore react accordingly. For us to say, you know, this is something uh, that was that was there in the past and, uh, you know, nothing has changed. The Chinese were there since 1959. Uh, I think that that idea, that attitude also needs to change so that we can start taking some real, you know, strong action in these areas. Oh, General, I think this last point of yours is so important. It's almost as if there is a constituency in this country that wants to obfuscate the truth. I mean, I don't see the problem in confronting the truth. They, have they built a village? Yes or no? Yes, they have. Is it in areas which we believe are ours? Yes, they have. But the entire obfuscation, the comparison with POK and with the uh, LAC in Ladakh, in, in Aksai Chin, I find utterly disingenuous because it's illegal according to a bilateral agreement. Isn't it time I, that we accept that, look, this has happened and we need to figure it out? I, I agree with you, Vishnu. You know, un unless we actually confront the problem sort of head on, uh, I mean, where will we find solutions to it? Uh, we need to we need to strongly sort of uh, oppose this activity by the by the Chinese. I, I told you, I mean, in 2015, the Chinese were e even opposing uh, some kind of channel that we were building yeah. in, uh, in Demchok. What did you do then, General, uh, in Demchok? So we, you know, we kept telling them that even there is activity on your side and that you are constructing on your side and therefore we are constructing on our side. Uh, at, at one stage, Vishnu, I will tell you, they stopped their construction. They said, okay, we are also not going to do it. The point I'm making is, unless we confront these issues, uh, understand that, you know, uh, this is the problem uh, and try and sort of honestly deal with it. Uh, as you said, if you are going to not accept an issue that, you know, that raises its head in front of us, uh, then I'm afraid we are only possibly encouraging the Chinese to do more, more and more in that area. Yeah. Well, General, thank you very much. It's, it's always wonderful speaking to you. Um, you know, and, and to, to, to sort of try and get your understanding of, of this situation. It is developing, unfortunately. Thanks very much for being with us. Thank you. Well, earlier on, uh, when we originally broke this story, I'd spoken to uh, the BJP MP from Arunachal Pradesh, Tapir Gao. Tapir Gao uh, is a BJP MP who raised this issue in Parliament in 2019, saying, look, the Chinese are coming in, something needs to be done. And on our program, he expressed his concern at continued construction activity in our land, in Arunachal Pradesh. We should do something and we should raise the issue with the government of China that they have illegally occupied our territory. And this is not a year works. Since 1984, the China is continuously constructing the road and today they have established their military base that you have shown in the uh, televisions and they have constructed two lane road very much inside uh, Indian Treaty. Well, joining us now, the senior Congress leader Manish Tiwari. Thank you, Manish, very much for being with us. Thank Do you, you believe the situation in, um, in Arunachal Pradesh with this village has a lot to do with the fact that we've not built up infrastructure? Uh, you know, it's something that we've just not done, not now, and we haven't done it for decades, which is why we are in this situation presently. Vishnu, I think there is a need to broaden this conversation. What we need to understand is that China has settled all its land boundary disputes uh, with each of its neighbors, except India and by extension Bhutan. Mm. And now currently the sino bhutanese talks with regard to their border dispute are already playing themselves out. There was a meeting in Kunming, there was an agreement arrived at, which was subsequently endorsed by both the uh, countries, China and Bhutan. And so therefore, if that was to fructify, India would be the only one country with which China has outstanding border disputes. And if you look at the trajectory of the manner in which China has dealt with its other land boundary disputes, they have actually settled for much, much less than what they originally asked for. Today, all China's outstanding land uh, disputes, territorial disputes, are in their maritime arena. 
they are except for india and with the bhutan negotiations under way there is no land boundary dispute with china has now this begs a question that if china was willing to settle with everybody else why aren't they willing to settle with india and the answer is very simple they want to keep this uh, dispute simmering uh, in order to ensure that india remains contained uh, within the south asian region and it is unable to fulfill its global aspirations so therefore the transgressions which you saw uh, in eastern ladakh beginning in the april of uh, 2020 which still continue they still continue to hold territory and now what has started ha happening in the eastern sector are a part of that larger strategy and that is why the special representative talks have not gone further i don't think there has been a round mm. after 2019 so i entirely agree with what general huda was saying earlier we need to confront the reality we need to tell the country that we have a situation uh, which is sensitive if not precarious and we need to at least have a discussion on it threadbare it is unfortunate that the chinese transgressions took place in the april of 2020 till today you have not had a single discussion in parliament on what has been happening on our borders so therefore there is this attempt uh, primarily because the bjp is a prisoner of its own rhetoric of muscular nationalism that they are unwilling to uh, a confront the truth and b share that with the country and uh, the most eloquent example of that is right after galwan at the all party meeting when the prime minister said that no chinese have come into indian territory now that begs a question then did our people go across uh, when the galwan clash took place so therefore in order to manage the optics back home you are actually conceding strategic space to the chinese and the chinese are laughing all the way to the bank because they understand that as long as these people remain trapped in their own rhetoric of muscular nationalism they can continue with the salami slicing and therefore what has happened in arunachal pradesh in the construction of the village and the lack of a response by the government of india is symptomatic of that trap which they have got themselves into All right. Well, Manisha, thank you so much for uh, for sharing those thoughts with us. It is something we need to confront very, very urgently. We're going to move on, and we're going to uh, debate uh, this entire issue. I'm joined by the Congress leader, uh, leaders, uh, Supriya Shinet, national spokesperson for the Congress, uh, and also Ranbir Singh Patania, spokesperson of the BJP. Um, Ranbir Singh Patania, let me come to you first. Or we'll get him in. A, we'll get him in just a, a moment from now. Let me go across to Supriya Shinet. Supriya, so, do you believe there needs to be a white paper as far as Arunachal Pradesh specifically is concerned? You know, so I think too much has happened in Arunachal Pradesh or actually other parts of this country as far as China is concerned. For all of us to just stay mute spectators, please do not forget what is happening in Arunachal Pradesh has been warned by the BJP MP, by media, by sections of the opposition, including us. Look at what happened in Uttarakhand. China just walked in, destroyed one of the bridges, and walked out. They are in pact with Bhutan. They are in pact with Pakistan, uh, playing along Afghanistan. Look at the neighboring countries all around us. It almost seems like a puppet show by China. And are we going to sit there sanguine as the prime minister tells the world, "Koi ghusa nahi hua"? I think it's time that the prime minister comes forward, takes the nation into confidence, and settles. at least what the whole issue is all about the prime minister seems to have taken this call that he is not going to do anything about it and and lie to this country i don't think that's acceptable at all i mean here is a pentagon report which is saying that within 4 and 1/2 kilometers of our own territory there is a chinese village that has come up and are we just going to sit there and stay quiet as the prime minister uh, you know tells us half truth complete lies i don't think that's going to happen because you have to see what's happening as a larger part of this china thing because you've got depsang you've got gogra you've got hot springs where china still occupies our territory you've got the goc which has you know who has so said one second let me go are, across to ranbir unwilling. pathania who uh, is also with sure. us now mr pathania is it not time for for india to stop hiding what the chinese have actually done why did this require a new story to emerge to show that the chinese have built a village 
in Arunachal Pradesh, why couldn't somebody in the government say we have been confronted by a serious problem? Sir, there is nothing to hide. The issue Visib is India and Visib is China. This date is back to 1947 and then 1962. I'll refer to the learned Congress spokesperson to the statement of Mr. Sharad Pawar, who officially confirms it on board that since 1962, 45,000 square kilometer of area has illegally been occupied by China. We don't, uh, so far as construction of a village, we don't affirm it. We don't uh, uh, give a formal recognition to it. But, but giving a constructive turn to the turn of events, sir, it is Sorry, high sir, time. You don't affirm it as in? Can I please? Sir, my, sir, my point is that the question of which you have set up that they have, they have set up a village within that Arunachal Pradesh. I, uh, I don't have any such official confirmation. So except what from is the media. official confirmation? The latitude sir. and longitude is marked on an image by a leading satellite image that, provider. That it's, it's been there the, in a statement, uh, in a document, it's been 700 pages, the by, prepared by the Pentagon and submitted to the U.S. Congress as well of the Absolutely. presence of this. My, my, Unless there are my, other villages with 100 homes in them, this is the only one, sir. As we know, that's not I, the case. I don't even understand. International satellite my, experts have verified my, this report. A statement has been obtained from the External Affairs Ministry where they have not denied its existence. How can you say that you don't affirm it, sir? sir Why my, don't you say my, you affirm my, it and say it's a problem for us and talk sir, about my, how sir, we can fix it? Sir, uh, sir, I, I agree and I rather accuse that it's a problem. But so far as this construction, of, well, let, us, let us wait for the official version of the Bharat Sarkar. Let's wait. Let's wait and I'm hopeful Vishnu, can I please come come out. and a comprehensive version will come out. But this is a problem. We accuse it. We don't have anything to cite, sir. We accuse it. The issue of Visibus India and Visibus China. At Aksai Chin, we stake our 38,000 oh square kilometer of area. Park China has Vishnu, initially occupied can I please Aksai come in? in? In Arunchal Pradesh. In Arunchal Pradesh, China is given to the habit of creating issues. Now, every now and then, we have been able to guard them. We have been able, we have been able to put them at bay on international forum. On, uh, on we could say, on every such, on every such issue, on, on every international forum, we have been able to put our case forth. But what to do with there's a neighbor which Vishnu, is can I please come again, in? again, which is creating issues yes. and issues again. So okay. we should have, we should have a broad a broader all party consensus with due respect to Madam Supriya. Okay, we should all have party, all party consensus. consensus. I, I we would agree with that. But Supriya, make your point. Yes, yes, please. Vishnu, there can be an all party consensus when the union government is willing to tell the truth to this country and to the country's opposition. You remember in June 2020 when the prime minister just turned around and said, "Koi ghusa nahi hua hai." I mean, I don't understand why are you still in denial? This is a very, very grave matter of national security. And Vishnu, I cannot emphasize enough what's happening in our neighborhood. We are almost alienated. Nepal is playing to China's tunes. Sri Lanka is in bed with China. Bhutan is talking to China. Our fair weather ally, Pakistan and China's nexus is very well known. We now have an Afghan Taliban problem. Do we not realize the enormity of the situation? Do we not realize what's happening in Jammu and Kashmir now and, and, and connect the dots? Are we going to sit there and are we going to be willing to listen to the lies being spewed by the BJP spokespersons and the Prime Minister? Okay, one sec, Supriya. In fact, Mr. Pathania, you mentioned a key point about a government of India reaction. Supriya, one second, because it's a point that he mentioned. I'll read out that reaction because we given please, a, and we got a uh, response I have something to say on from that. the MEA. We Madam, have please, seen please, recent please, reports please on China please. undertaking construction work along the border areas with India. China has undertaken such infrastructure construction in the past several years. In response, yes. our government too has stepped up border infrastructure, including the construction of roads, bridges, etc., which has provided Absolutely. much needed connectivity to the local population yes. along the border. This is the response yes, of the government. You know of what is, sir? Vishnu, can there is no can denial of any seconds, of, of this not being in India, uh, Vishnu, Mr. Patel. Can I please get 30 seconds? Sir, sir, Half I, a second, Supi. I'll come to you next. I, sir, I again stick to my stand. First of all, with my with all due respects to my learned senior spokesperson from Congress, please be respectful. We shouldn't charge a government with speaking lies on such a national media. Please be, be respectful. This is a this is an international issue. This is a political issue. And this is a social issue for the people of India and for the people of Jammu and Kashmir. Also, everyone is scared. This has created a political and a social issue. Also, we're talking about so, Arunachal Pradesh, sir, over here. Yes, yes, sir. I'm uh, I'm coming to Madam was taking us to Jammu and Kashmir. That was uh, I I was giving her a very very slight purview from Jammu and Kashmir. Now let's come to Arunachal Pradesh, sir. Yes, China. Not this is not the first time. This might have been the 20th time China has been 
doing unwanted, unnecessary, uncalled for incursions in the territory of in no, the sir. legally de jure and the de facto territory of India, which we call as the Arunchal Pradesh. Arunchal, we stick to the Ministry of External Affairs standpoint that China is, oh, sorry, Arunchal is a very, very integral part of the Indian territory, the Indian state and the Indian, we could say the Indian polity also. So, are you so, aware of the Chinese having constructed Vishnu, a hundred home in? village in any other part of India inside our uh, territory? This sir, is why uh, this is important, sir. It's different yeah, yeah, sir. and it's sir. qualitatively different, sir. For sir, example, Vishnu, if cover? you look at what has taken place in Galwan, if you look, take a, lo a look at what's taken place in Debsang, in all of the other areas, there have been temporary structures by and large. These are cemented homes on our yes, land. Sir. That's that that changes the status quo over there. And in yes, the sir. north bank of Pangong, when they came in, they moved back because they had tents yes. and military structures which were temporary. Yes. You cannot move yes. those back. You have to break them. You don't build yes. to no, break Vishnu. in that manner, Mr. Patel. And Vishnu also. We have to, sir. We have to. I I I I stick to your very very particular point on it, we need to break them and we need to smash them back lock, stock and barrel. Every Indian and particularly Bharat Sarkar under the leadership of Narendra Modi is committed to safeguard, to protect each and every inch of Indian land. And we stand committed to the statement made by the Indian Prime Minister on the floor of the parliament that we no inch of a land and not even a single, we could say, iota of Vishnu, uh, can I please uh, come in? Let there be no doubt and double opinion okay. about it. All right, Please, Mr. Patania, one sec, Supriya, go ahead. Please, please. I have a very please. brief point to make. When you talk about those hundred houses village, they are dual purpose villages. They can be used for civilian as well as for the PLA to use. Let us not forget that. I will only say one thing. All of this is a result of a very trigger happy headline chasing external affairs policy foreign policy or for this that matter defense doing. policy. What is happening right now? The Please Prime Minister makes it. one statement, the MEA goes and makes another statement, the Defense Ministry has to retract a report on its website because the Prime Minister's image has to be kept up. I don't think this is a laughing matter, Mr. BJP spokesperson. This is a very, very serious issue. Please realize what is happening. Har jage surkhiya aur headline man dhoodiye. Aaj bhi China ki sena jo hai, wo Depsang, Gogra, और हॉट स्प्रिंग जैसी जगहों पर है मेरी बात सुनिए आप आपकी दिक्कत ये है कि आपके जो एमपी है योर ओन एमपी इज एक्चुअली टेलिंग द वर्ल्ड दैट चाइना हैज ट्रूडेड अ टेरिटरी 4 एंड 1/2 किलोमीटर्स इनसाइड दे हैव बिल्ड अ विलेज यू वांट टू डिनाई दैट एज वेल प्लीज डोंट ऑल राइट ओके 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 लेट्स लेट्स नॉट लेट्स नॉट फाइट लेट्स लेट्स नॉट गेट इनटू अ फाइट ऑन दिस एंटायर इशू जस्ट वन मोर पॉइंट जस्ट वन मोर पॉइंट मिस्टर पठानिया यू नो टुडे द टाइम्स ऑफ इंडिया हैड एन इंटरेस्टिंग आर्टिकल and it seems yes. to endorse what supriya is saying the title yes. of the article is that pentagon cited china village is a pla camp yes. it says byline guwahati the large 100 home civilian village mentioned in a pentagon report yes right in the upper subansri district of arunachal pradesh has become a permanent military camp according to a senior official deputed by the state government last year to do a field assessment they've named the additional deputy commissioner where he was posted and what he did so this is not just a civilian home in many ways a civilian home would be even more dangerous because you can you can fight or technically against a military target you can't do that against a civilian target but what supriya says is correct according to officials it's already become a military occupied site sir uh, my very very respectful very very humble point before this that since I reiterated that China has been creating perennial issues for India, vis a vis, we could say India and Aksai Chin, vis a vis India and Arunchal Pradesh, and on, we could say, creating perennial troubles in the entire South Asian subcontinent. China has been creating internal troubles in India. It's an admitted fact, no two opinions about it. But my respectful submission to Madam and all political parties, why don't we should have an all-party consensus on it? So why shouldn't you say, Madam? There to be talks so, well, sorry, before there is consensus. It should come from your mouth that Mr. Consensus. Prime Minister, we support you. And all right, all right, both of you, I need to, I need to end this because I'm completely out of time. If there is such hopefully there will be all-party consensus, but there need to be all-party talks on this. For starters, I, I need to wrap this up because there are people who've got certain questions as well on coup. Archana writes in and says, is Arunachal Pradesh the next target by China after Ladakh? 
Neha writes in and says, why were necessary steps not taken before when the territory was being occupied? In terms of comments on coup, those were questions. Now, a few comments. It seems like China is hungry to create problems with India because the whole world is looking towards India instead of China as a manufacturing hub. Another person, Shub, writes in and says, the Indian government uh, must have, has to be strong in information warfare against China and Pakistan. And information warfare is one thing. Let's hope the truth emerges uh, and it's actual information and not disinformation by anybody. We'll take a short break. There's more coming up. For the third time in recent weeks, the Supreme Court has expressed its dissatisfaction with the handling of the case involving farmers run over in Lakhimpur Kheri last month, allegedly by the Union Minister Ajay Mishra's son, Ashish Mishra. We don't want to add to political overtones. Let a retired High Court judge oversee the case. That's what the Chief Justice of India, N.V. Ramana, said, berating the Uttar Pradesh government over poor progress in the investigation. It's not going the way we expected, is what he said. <laughs> For the third time, tough words for the UP government from the Supreme Court, this time virtually alleging favouritism by the state in probing the role of the son of a union minister accused in the killing of farmers. The police had registered two FIRs, one against Ashish Mishra for the deaths of four farmers and another against farmers for killing BJP workers. But a three-judge bench of the Supreme Court led by the Chief Justice of India today said the police probe was tilted much towards probing the FIR against the farmers. One particular accused being given benefits. Evidence is being collected in a way to protect when accused, the court said. Accused being given benefit by overlapping two different FIRs, the court said. Harish Salve, lawyer for the UP government, responded, saying that the overlapping of FIRs was because there was confusion over murder of journalist Raman Kashyap. The BJP had initially claimed that Kashyap was killed by farmers, but it later emerged that he was allegedly overrun by the cars in the convoy of the minister's son. Salve, however, admitted that there are political overtones to everything that is happening. The Chief Justice of India said, we don't want to add to political overtones. Let a retired judge oversee this. The judge should be from another state, not from the UP High Court. The court even gave the state government suggestions on who could head the probe. They also two names. One is the Justice Ranjit Singh, who is in Punjab and Haryana High Court. And the other is the Army background. And they said that they have criminal knowledge. The other is... Justice Rakesh Kumar. Ashish Mishra was arrested on the 9th of October, six days after the Lakhimpur Kheri incident. He is currently in jail. The court was also unhappy with the pace of the probe, saying that it gave 10 days to the UP government to file its status report, yet not much progress had been made and things were not going the way the court expected. With Alok Pandey in Lucknow and camera person Ashok Mahale in New Delhi, this is Sukirti Dwedi for NDTV. All right, so some very strong observations by the Supreme Court today. We'll be looking at that. I'm joined by uh, the uh, BJP leader Alok Vat, Supriya Shinet, still with us from the Congress Party, Ashwani Dube, advocate in the Supreme Court. Uh, with us, Dr. Uh, Darshan Pal, president of the Krantikari Kisan Union, joins us as well. I'd like to thank you all very much for being with us. Alok Vat, let me come to you first. Is it not embarrassing that this is the third time that the Supreme Court would have to haul up uh, the handling of this particular case? They've said, they've observed today, and I quote, there is nothing in the status report. Lab reports also have not come. Yes, I admit that it is embarrassing for us what the Supreme Court has commented on the way that things are going. But let me tell you one thing, that they are specified now that it should be proved by, they have suggested two names, and I think the UK government will uh, ensure that one of the judges heads this whole probe and let things go on that way. But yes, according to me, the whole drama is taking place like this only because the minister is still sticking to his post. Normally, in my opinion, he should have resigned and waited till the outcome of the case and if he was, uh, you know, uh, not guilty, then he could have again become the minister. 
it's it's his position that has made us so embarrassing. Mr. Watts, so things. Mr. Watts, you 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 wanted the MOS. You On want you want the MOS home to step down. Is that right? Advani ji has done it done uh, done it in the past. Lal Bahadur Shastri did it in the past. There have been several leaders when they have been accused of anything, they have stepped down and waited till the outcome of the result. I think he should have also done that. Why all this hue and cry? Only because he is sticking to the post. People think does that your party, he does your party endorse that view of yours that the MOS home should step down. Beg your pardon. Does your party endorse that view that the MOS home should step down? I think sooner or later they will have to do this because this is now too much. The way the the way the Supreme Court has said it is highly embarrassing for us as of today. All right, that's that's a very interesting observation. Supriya, would you like to just comment on that? A, a, a BJP leader actually saying that the MOS home has to step down. I would first like to thank and also compliment Alok Watsji for accepting the truth and saying it as is. Uh, I, and I think it needs a lot of courage, especially in a party like the BJP, where he may be reprimanded or may have to face action for what he has said. However, I would just want to add one thing. Ajay Mishra Taini may want to stick to his position and not resign. And he's in an extremely influential position. He's the Minister of State for Home Affairs, especially when his son is the main accused. Why can he not be sacked? And that decision rests with the Prime Minister and the Home Minister solely. He can be sacked and we can move ahead and there can be a completely fair and independent probe. When the courts say that uh, the, the accused is being given benefits by trying to overlap FIRs, the court is alluding to the fact that there is a very influential man in the government that's trying to save him. And that man may not resign. He may want to stick to his position because he may have not no moral compass. But does the BJP government have no moral compass at all? Has the moral compass been lost for the prime minister as well as the home minister? Why can they not sack him? And it is something that they can do within two minutes if they desire to. The man shares a stage with Amit Shah in Lucknow during an election rally. We really expect Amit Shah to sack him. I think he has complete endorsement okay. of the Prime Minister and the Home Minister. All right, let me just go across to Ashwini Dubey. Uh, Mr. Dubey, what some, uh, a few of the other observations uh, by uh, the court. It's not going the way that we expected, right? We don't want to add to political overtones. Let a retired judge oversee this. Um, and, and, you know, they were, they were replying to what Harish Salve said for the UP government, where he said there are political overtones to everything that is happening. The Chief Justice said we don't want to add overtones. Let a retired judge oversee this. Is this the only way that there be justice in this case? Let there be a retired judge who will oversee the proceedings on a day-by-day -day basis. Thank you very much, Vishnuji, for having me here. Vishnuji, at a time when investigation is ongoing, and crucial evidences with respect to this offense is being gathered. And it appears to the court that the investigation is not being conducted in a fair and transparent manner that the courts in its discretion may monitor an investigation into an offense when it is satisfied that either the investigation is not being proceeded with or being influenced by interested person. As a student of law, I would speak the law and what I have read from the various Supreme Court judgments, Vishnuji. In the rare and compelling circumstances, if it appears to the apex court or the, any other court that there are overlapping of the evidences or evidences may be destroyed, then the court may monitor an investigation to ensure that the investigating agency conducts the investigation in a free, fair and time-bound manner without any external interference. Now the question here is, the, it means that the court is intended to ensure the proper progress of the investigation without directing or channelizing the mode or manner of the investigation. Yep. Here, under the Commissions of Enquiry Act, one High Court, former High Court judge of Uttar Pradesh was already appointed as the chairperson to look into the investigation. But the Supreme Court, being the top court, Apex Court, was not satisfied with the action taken by the Uttar Pradesh government. And then finally, Supreme Court this, took this decision. So here is the case. Until and unless the investigation is completed in a free, fire, free fair, impartial manner, and all the evidences with respect to the okay. FIR is gathered and charge it is filed, Vishnuji respected Vishnuji in the court till the time the court will supervise it and monitor it that the probe is uninfluenced by any political person who is either in the party, the 
top position is the minister or okay. whatever it is. Dr. Darshan Pal, do you believe that this is the way to go? Uh, one of the other key points mentioned by the Supreme Court uh, was that, the, uh, was that uh, there appears that the SIT is unable to maintain a distance between the two FIRs, right? Yes. Do you believe that yes. this is perhaps the most yes, important uh, observation yes. today? Yes, the observation of the Supreme Courts are very correct that uh, the witnesses of 219 and 220 FIRs, they are being overlapped. I know the witnesses of our side of uh, FIR 219, they were very much worried. They were, they were horrified and the people were not coming forward. And until and unless Supreme Court takes such a, such a stern such a strong view of the case, the witnesses will come for, won't come forward. Even if we Supreme Court wants them to give the security to them, they won't come forward. So in that, in this case, I think the Supreme Court has very uh, strongly taken the view that there should be a, another judge from another high court who should look after day and day, day, day to day uh, uh, investigation of the case. In this way, I think uh, the, the, the MOS uh, should immediately uh, should resign from his post. Resign, or right. uh, Prime Minister, Home Minister should take his resignation or should he should be thrown out of the, the Home Ministry. Because Home Ministry is the main ministry which is looking after all the home department right. of the country right. and especially of the UP also. All right. Well, I'd like to thank you all very much for joining us. Uh, this is the third time that the Supreme Court has pulled up the process of investigation. I'd like to leave it there because some important news coming in from Tamil Nadu. Very heavy rainfall is expected across the state, which has already been seeing a great deal of rainfall. Uh, very heavy rainfall tomorrow across Tamil Nadu. Boats have been deployed in Chennai for rescue operations. After the 2015 floods, these are the heaviest rains that Chennai has seen. Chennai streets turned into canals, even in the chief minister's constituency. The Thompsons had to shift their elderly uncle on the ground floor. Residents say authorities have learnt no lessons since the devastating 2015 flood. In 2015, uh, it was a very big flood and uh, the government should have improved in due time. It is almost six years. They should have improved the infrastructure. The 21 centimetre rain the city received is four centimetres less than the horrendous flood of 2015. But authorities say lessons learnt from then have saved Chennai now and helped waters recede quickly. Storm water drains desilted three months early. Trees pruned. A 5,000 crore project has connected many extension areas to the drains network. As a result, Chennai's 300 chronic inundation hotspots are down to just 60 now. Water has surrounded their houses. The discharge from the biggest lake, Chembarambakam, is gradual now, unlike the sudden excessive release five years ago. The change is that the, the speed with which water has receded because of the break in the rain in the night has enabled the water to recede quickly. So the challenge before us is to ensure that in the aftermath of the rains, the water level, water level reduces. For the common man though, the nightmare continues. Authorities say but for their preparedness, Chennai would have seen a repeat of the devastation by 2015 floods that flooded more than 4 lakh homes. Well, that's a huge relief so far. With Met forecasting heavy rains, the next few days will be an acid test for lessons learned. In Chennai with Suresh, Sam Daniel, Find the TV. Well, there's double trouble for residents of Delhi. Not uh, enough air, even water in the city is highly polluted. And there is proof. Take a look at this report. Not just air pollution, now water pollution has visibly worsened in the capital. But the toxic form has indebted Chhat Puja devotees. 
नहीं डर लगता हम लोग गंगा मानते हैं नहीं हम लोग के नहीं होता भगवान के नाम से नहीं होता The air pollution remains bad even though the AQI levels have dipped slightly from the 400 severe mark to under 400 still in the very poor category. साथ में जो स्मॉग पड़ता है फेस्टिवल्स की वजह से आंखों पे सबसे ज्यादा इफेक्ट पड़ता है ऊपर से ब्रीथ में काफी सबसे प्रॉब्लम होती है। हम दूर जाते हैं ऊपर से चलना भी पड़ता है काफी बस स्टैंड से लेके स्कूल तक जाना पड़ता है। These fires in Punjab and Haryana are contributing roughly a third of the main air pollutant PM 2.5. But year after year, governments of all parties at the centre and state have failed to stop them. Air pollution every year kills more people than Corona does. However, the political blame game over air and water pollution continues. Punjab से सबसे ज़्यादा अपराली जलने घटनाएँ आ रही हैं। उसके बाद हरियाणा और उत्तर प्रदेश। जमुना में जो पानी आता है, वो दिल्ली से नहीं आता, हरियाणा से आता है। हरियाणा से जरीला पानी छोड़ा गया, जहाँ भाजपा की सरकार है। पहली बार जब बने थे अरविंद केजरीवाल तभी बोला है और लगभग हर चैनल को बोला है कि हम अभी अभी आए हैं लेकिन पांच साल दीजिए जमुना में हम सबके साथ खुद डुबकी लगाएंगे आइए डुबकी लगाइए ना अरविंद केजरीवाल फर्स्ट एयर नाउ वाटर पोल्यूशन नेशनल कैपिटल अथॉरिटीज मस्ट पुट इन प्लेस एक्शन प्लान बिफोर अनादर हेल्थ इमरजेंसी इज अनाउंस विद मोहम्मद मुर्सिल इन डेली सोनाक्षी चक्रवर्ती एन and finally, India's biggest ever IPO, Paytm debut today, from skipping meals to 18,300 crores of uh, an IPO in a decade. Vijay Shekhar Sharma, it's been quite the show. This tagline remains a popular catchphrase. It symbolizes the rapid growth of Paytm led by founder and CEO Vijay Shekhar Sharma in just over a decade. From the time when he says he skipped meals to save money to leading India's biggest IPO so far, 18,300 crore rupees, which opened today. Coming from a humble background in Aligarh, Vijay taught himself English with the help of rock songs and also learnt coding while building a digital payment network which today has 337 million users. I come from a family where uh, nobody has been in business. I was the black sheep identified. And at some point in time, when my, uh, I remember that my mother thought that uh, because I couldn't get a job, that is why I'm trying to try a company there. And uh, when I got married, uh, which is a family arranged marriage, so uh, my wife didn't even know that I'm a quote-unquote businessman. They thought that I work for a company. <laughs> Prayers and celebrations underway at Paytm as a fresh journey towards the stock market begins. Some of the world's richest individuals and firms have already invested and are in cashing on this now. While day one subscription levels for the IPO closed at 0.18 times, the company itself paints a bleak picture for profit. We expect to continue to incur net losses for the foreseeable future and we may not achieve or maintain profitability in the future, they say. Our June financials, where we grew about 62% year-on-year in terms of revenue, and we are generating a significant amount of what we call contribution profit. And this year, just in the one quarter, just in the June quarter, we generated 245 crores of contribution profit. Firstly, we don't know as to when they will show profits. Even the management is not too sure. With technology is changing so fast, there can be a possibility of a disruptor in this space, which could actually derail their prospects. Even as financial concerns remain, the remarkable growth picture for Paytm reflects an exciting time for India's digital payment services sector. Sakshi Bajaj for NDTV. Let them keep trying. And you? Paytm Karo.